Welcome to Legion Builds, where I guide you on how to bring your favorite fictional characters into Dungeons & Dragons. This video and all my content is made possible by my Patreon supporters, and it's dedicated to every one of you who subscribes to my channel. All of you are the reason why this channel keeps going. Join the Legion today over at patreon.com slash 63rd Legion for free and help decide next week's new character. And paid supporters receive early access to all my content as well as a shout out in them. Today we're bringing to life the classic video game hero from Bionic Commando, Nathan Spencer. Once a member of an elite military unit, Nathan lost his arm in battle and became the first test subject for cybernetic enhancements. Codename Research and Development Subject 1, or RAD1, Nathan was given a cybernetic arm which grants him superhuman strength and a wire grapple launcher, which allows him amazing mobility as well as the ability to grab enemies and pull them towards him. He's also armed with several weapons and boots that allow him not to take fall damage. Even without his arm though, Nathan is a master in hand-to-hand -hand combat and marksmanship. For today's build, we'll be using the Player's Handbook and Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. We're using Standard Point Array to make things simple, and we are multi-classing, so keep an eye on minimum should you use a different system. Make Dex 15, Strength 14, Intelligence 13, Con 12, Wisdom 10, and we'll make Charisma 8. You kind of have a bad attitude, and you're not really liked by a lot of people, so... Nathan is a human. Varian Human grants a free feat and skill with stat improvements. Place plus one into strength and dex. For your feat, Crusher adds plus one to strength and improves your attacks that deal bludgeoning damage. Once per turn, when you hit with an attack that deals bludgeoning damage, you hit the creature so hard they are pushed back five feet as long as they are one category size larger than you or less. When you score a critical hit with an attack that deals bludgeoning damage, you knock the wind out of them, and now all attack rolls against them are at advantage until the start of your next next turn. For your free skill, grab survival. To finish out this lineage, you know the languages common and one other your choice. For background, take perception and medicine. You have two more proficiencies of your choice, which can be tools or languages. I would grab some tools to maintain your gear. Heads up, you're going to get three different tool proficiencies just from the build, so plan ahead. Before we start, let's talk about your arm. Currently, D&D has a magical cybernetic that is actually a common magical item. Prosthetic limb, which can be found in Tasha's, can be any limb you need replaced. It doesn't have any other properties, so I don't think your DM would be against it. But there is something we'll need to talk about in our first level, so let's get right to it. Level 1 fighters start off with two skills. Grab athletics and acrobatics. You're proficient in all weapons, armors, shields, and the saving throw strength and con. Fighting style gives you unarmed fighting. Your unarmed strikes are now a d6 when holding something or a d8 when holding nothing. This will be bludgeoning damage and will use your strength modifier. You can also automatically deal 1d4 bludgeoning damage to a creature you're grappling. Now, because your arm is a magic item, I would say it's magical damage in my games. But your DM might change this. And remember, this isn't a magical weapon, which will come up later. Talk to your DM about it, see how they feel. Second Wind lets you heal yourself 1d10 plus your fighter level once per short or long rest. Alright, let's get some gear. Level 1 Artificers found in Tasha's Cauldron begin with bonus proficiencies. You are now proficient with Tinkerer's Tools and Thieves' Tools. Magical Tinkering lets you imbue magical effects onto tiny, non-magical objects. These effects include a sound, smell, a small static image like a symbol, or light. They stay active until you stop them or you exceed your total limit which you can use, which is your Intelligence modifier. Spell Casting makes you a half caster. You can prepare a total number of spells equal to half your Artificer level plus your your intelligence modifier. You start off with two cantrips and one first level spell. For your spells, Thorn Whip fires your grappling wire at a target out to 30 feet and deals 1d6 piercing damage on a hit before reeling them back and pulling them 10 feet towards you. Fire Bolt fires a blast out to 120 feet and deals 1d10 fire damage on a hit. Jump triples your jump distance for one minute. Level 2 Artificers gain infused items. This lets you turn non-magical items into magical ones. You know 4 at this level, but can only have 2 active at once. For your infusions, Enhanced Defense adds plus 1 to your AC. Repeating Shot turns a ranged weapon into a plus 1 magical weapon, and once attuned, allows you to ignore the loading properties, if it must be loaded, and creates magical ammunition so you no longer need ammo to use it. Replicate Magic Item lets you create Sending Stone. 
phones. These work similar to walkie-talkies, but they aren't walkie-talkies. You can only use them once a day and can only send and receive 25 words. Your DM might change this though. Now for your last one, you might be interested in taking Enhanced Weapon, which turns a non-magical weapon into a plus one weapon. But please remember, your arm is not a weapon unless your DM has decided it is. I do believe it is magical and therefore it deals magical damage when you hit someone with it, but it's not going to be a weapon. It's going to be an unarmed strike. By the way, any infused item you make is now your spellcasting focus. Level 2 fighters now have action surge. You can give yourself a free action once per short or long rest. Level 3 fighters receive their subclass. Champion found in the player's handbook will actually help this build a lot in a few levels. Improved critical lets you score critical hits on a 19 or 20. You've reached character level 5. Firstly, your proficiency bonus is now plus 3, and Firebolt now does 2d10 fire damage, and Thorn Whip does 2d6 piercing damage. Level 4 fighters earn our first ability score improvement, and it's time to fly with your grappling hand. Kind of. Grab the feat Fey Touched from Tasha's. This adds plus one to intelligence and gives you two spells that you can cast once per long rest without a spell slot. You can cast them with spell slots if you wish, so don't worry. For your spells, Misty Step is a 30 foot teleportation that you can make with a bonus action. Best I can unless your DM lets you homebrew a grappling arm or you get your hands on something like a grappling rod from the Cobalt Press's book, Tome of Heroes, which is actually a grappling hook gun and you modify it to your arm. Hunter's Mark lets you mark an enemy within 90 feet with a bonus action for one hour while you maintain the spell. While active, you will deal an extra 1d6 damage when you hit them, and you have advantage on perception and survival checks to find them. If they die before the end of your spell, you can choose to use your bonus action to move the mark to a new creature within range. Oh wait, your intelligence has gone up. That means you get another artificer spell. Featherfall stops all fall damage no matter the height as a reaction. Level 5 fighters gain extra attack. You can now attack twice with a single attack action. Level 3 artificers now get their subclass. Time for some guns with Artillerist found in Tasha's. First, you gain a new tool proficiency with Woodcarver's tools. Elder Cannon creates a magical gun with an action using your Woodcarver or Smith's tools. This cannon can be tiny like a pistol or small like a cannon. And by cannon, I mean a handheld cannon. Or maybe just a really big gun. It can also have feet and can move if you wish, but you want a gun, so no feet. When you create it, you choose a function for it, and each turn you can use your bonus action to fire the weapon. For its functions, Force Ballista fires a concussive force as a ranged spell attack out to 120 feet, dealing 2d8 force damage on a hit, and then pushing the target back 5 feet. Flamethrower exhales a 15-foot cone of flame, forcing a deck save on everyone within the cone, causing 2d8 fire damage on a failure. Protector creates a field around that grants 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier and temporary HP to you and everyone within 10 feet of you. All this is a bonus action. I'd go with Ballista, but it's up to you because you're going to get some pretty good ranged spells here. Artillerist spells gives you free spells that you always have prepared and do not count towards your total prepared spells. For these spells, she Shield adds plus 5 to your AC as a reaction and automatically stops magic missile. Thunder Wave lets you smash your fist into the ground and send out a shock wave. Every creature within 15 feet must make a con save or take 2d8 thunder damage on a failure and be pushed back 10 feet. Level 4 Artificers earn another ability score improvement. Bump up strength. For your new spell, Long Strider increases your speed by 10 feet for 1 hour. You've hit character level 9, raise your proficiency bonus to plus 4. Level 6 fighters earn another ability score improvement, bump up intelligence. You get another artificer spell with this, Cure Wounds heals 1d8 plus your intelligence modifier. Level 7 champion fighters are remarkable athletes. You can now add half your proficiency bonus to any strength decks or con check you make that isn't already adding it, like initiative rolls. You can also increase your total running long jump distance in feet equal to your strength modifier. Your character level 11, Firebolt now does 3d10 fire damage and Thorn Whip does 3d6 piercing damage. Level 8 fighters earn another ability score improvement, cap off strength from better attack damage and some serious jumping power. 
Level 5 Artillerist Artificers gain Arcane Firearm. You can now transform a wand, staff, or rod, go with wand, you have a theme here with firearms, into a conduit of destructive power by using your wood carving tools when you finish a long rest. This is now a spell casting focus for you, and when you cast damage causing spells, you can add 1d8 to the damage. You also now have second level spells. For your artillerist spells, Scorching Ray fires three blasts out to 120 feet and deals 2d6 fire damage per blast. Each blast can be directed at someone different or the same person. Shatter fires a grenade out to 60 feet and explodes into a 10 foot radius. Everyone within the radius must make a con save or take 3d8 thunder damage on a failure. You've hit character level 13, bump up your proficiency bonus to plus 5. Level 6 Artificers receive Tool Expertise. Now when you use a tool you're proficient with, you double the proficiency bonus. Not amazing, I know, but for roleplay and crafting items, it's great. You gain two more infusions and can now have three active at once. For those infusions, Replicate Magic Item gives you Goggles of Night, which grants dark vision out to 60 feet. Spell Refueling Ring lets you recover one used spell slot that is third level or lower once a day. For your spells, Enhance Ability allows you to grant yourself advantage on a chosen stat for one hour while you maintain this spell. Certain stats also grant other bonuses, like temp HP, double carry capacity, or taking no fall damage for up to 20 feet. Mage Hand, send your grapple hand out to 30 feet from you for one minute. With an action, you can control the hand to grab things or perform simple actions, like open doors and whatnot. You can't attack with this hand, activate magic items, and it can only hold up to 10 pounds. Level 7 Artificers now have Flash of Genius. When you or another creature you see within 30 feet of you makes a skill check, you can use your reaction to add your intelligence modifier to the roll, even if you're already adding it. You can do this a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier per long rest. Level 8 Artificers earn our final ability score improvement. Bump up intelligence again for better spell attack and DC. For your new spells, I'm not giving you any. Next level, we'll get third level, and that's where I want to grab a spell from. So take two here if you want, but I'm replacing one of them next level. Level 9, Artillerist Artificers get some improvements to their Eldritch Cannon. Now all damage is increased by 1d8, and you can now detonate it with an action. Throwing it out to 60 feet, it explodes, and every creature within 20 feet must make a dex save or take 3d8 force damage. Remember, you need a long rest to create a new one. You also get third level spells. For your Artillerist spells, Fireball launches a missile 150 feet away and explodes. Every creature within the 20 foot radius blast must make a deck save or take 8d6 fire damage. Wind wall creates a wall of wind. Yeah, simple. You create this wall out to 120 feet for one minute while you maintain the spell. This wall is 50 feet long, 15 feet high, and 1 foot thick. When the wall appears, everyone within the area must make a strength save or take 3d8 bludgeoning damage. The wall keeps objects like arrows from passing through and smaller flying creatures or those in gaseous form. For your last artificer spell, Ashalun's Stride turns you into a force of speed with a bonus action. For one minute while you maintain the spell, your speed is increased by 20 feet and your movement doesn't provoke attacks of opportunity. As you move, your speed is so great that every creature within of 5 feet of your movement, even if you pass them, takes 1d6 fire damage once per turn. Wanna level Marvel vs. Capcom with this one. I just really want to use that spell. Your character level 17, now your proficiency bonus is now maxed out at plus 6. Firebolt now does 3d10 fire damage and Thorn Whip does 4d6 piercing damage. Level 9 Fighters gain Indomitable. You can now reroll one failed saving throw, including death saves once per long rest. Level 10 Champion Fighters receive an additional fighting style. Superior Technique grants you a special maneuver from the Battlemaster subclass and 1d6 superiority dice to perform this maneuver. Lunging Attack increases the reach of your attack by 5 feet at the cost of your superiority dice. If you hit, you add the superiority dice to the damage. Our final level is level 11 fighter and you get extra attack times 2. You can now attack up to 3 times with a single attack action. Now that we've hit level 20, let's recap. Your stats are strength 20, dex 16, con 12, intelligence 18, wisdom 10, charisma 8. Your total levels are fighter 11, artificer 9. Let's dive in. 
Your movement is amazing. You have a normal long jump of 20 feet and a high jump of 8 feet. You can raise this into a long jump of 60 feet and a high jump of 24 feet. You have a 30 foot teleportation and you can increase your movement speed of up to 60 feet, which will then light people on fire. Damage wise, you're not too bad either. Your punches are dealing 1d8 plus 5 damage and you can attack up to 3 times normal or 6 times with an action surge. You have some serious range damage with your basic shot dealing 4d10 fire damage out to 120 feet. You can even fire as a bonus action and deal 2d8 force damage or light things on fire if you wish. You can even hook and pull people closer to you or knock them backwards with a hit. Downside. You have a lot of concentration spells, which I hate to say because at this point it's like 90% of all spellcasters. Your melee attacks aren't dealing magical damage unless your DM is okay with calling your metal arm magical, but if not, you can grab a magic weapon and call it a day. Finally, we dumped charisma, so social interactions will not go well for you and certain spells will be fun for you to deal with but roll for stats and everything will be a little better. Move about the battlefield unhindered and deal massive damage to your enemies. Thank you all for joining me today. Make sure to like and subscribe to not miss a single new build each week on YouTube and Spotify, and make sure to check out my Patreon, where you can help decide next week's new character.